Well, I think it's a very complex relationship. And uh, one that is not usually well understood, as you just said, <coughs> our philosophy and uh, science separated only recently, just a uh, few centuries ago. Formerly, there was no, no distinction, and even at the time of Newton, physics was called natural philosophy. There was no more philosophy and, and natural philosophy. Uh, unfortunately, the separation came. I uh, think at the time of Kant, it was a question <coughs> very related to the organization of universities. But in any case, in my view, uh, science has a philosophical kernel, a nucleus. It's not, uh, philosophy and science are not disjoint, but they, are, they overlap partially. And that philosophical nucleus of science is composed of at least three main phases, or perhaps four or five. One is an ontological thesis <coughs> uh, that the universe is material, there are no spirits floating around. The second is the realism, the epistemological thesis, realism, namely the, <coughs> the, the world can be known, and the scientific uh, the scientific enterprise consists in trying to know, scientific to reconstruct in conceptual terms that reality external and internal too. And then there is a moral component, very important one, underlined by, for the first time by Robert Merton in 1947, uh, 42, the, uh, the humanist uh, thesis that the science ought to be <coughs> pro-human and uh, first of all secular, of course, if I'm secular, but secular should be in the service of mankind, but there should be no mercenary science in the service, let's say, of war or regressive politics and so on and so forth. And so these three thesis, I think, when any one of them fails and is forgotten, then science derails. For instance, I just got this uh, book uh, by Davis and, and others. Uh, Davis is a physicist turned theologian. Uh, he earned the Templeton Prize some time ago precisely for uh, declaring that science uh, is not against religion that they two combine. And what is a bridge? Oh, the bridge, according to the book, the bridge between science and theology is information. Either information theory or the mere concept of information. And so here we will be one of the contributors to the book that says that the concept of information uh, in semantic information can be extended from the human realm to the cosmos and uh, so it is seen, he says, so he says, the notion of semantic information is extensive to cover the idea of the cosmic unembodied consciousness, unembodied consciousness, the consciousness can happen outside the brain, which carries and transmits the informational code for the construction of this and any possible universe. That is the mind of God. So, it's the proof. So, it's, uh, now we have finally the proof that uh, uh, God exists, and of course, God is a big computer, or perhaps not even that, but it's a computer program. Uh, so, uh, this is very, very fast. No, and it is linked also to another modern uh, myth, namely the myth of the parallel universes. So, <coughs> not only philosophers, but also a number of cosmologists and astrophysicists uh, and string theorists uh, have proclaimed that there are many universes, possibly infinitely many universes, which are totally disconnected among each other. So they cannot be 
<coughs> can, can, can be your information trans transmission, no signals going from one uh, world to the other. How do they know if, <coughs> if our universe is not connected to the Earth? How do they know that it is? Oh, never mind. It's not the question I'm giving to. It's totally dogmatic. And the string theory, for instance, they even calculated the exact number of uh, extra universes. There are 10 raised to 500 animalismal number of extra universes, parallel universes. Some of them have laws totally different from ours, others have a similar laws. And in that case, those that have similar laws, they contain human beings like us to do exactly the things that you and I are doing right now. Well, of course, who knows? I don't know how, how do we know that? It's a matter of faith. In this case, it's secular faith, but it's very similar to religious faith in the sense that both are dogmatic. They need no proof. It could, could be an alert prize if you cannot get in a while, at least a temperature prize. <laughs> uh, uh, right, but so, in that case, what was faith in that case? What faith in that case is, was, is of course, the material series that and the real series. The material series that the universe is material and the real series that it can be known. So here we see people who are distinguished from us, not only philosophers, who claim that most of reality is unknown in principle. It's not, not only that some, that most galaxies are very distant from us, so there is no way we are stop in contact. No, it's simply that we belong to different universes <coughs> that are disconnected from ours. Usually there's, there's some purpose behind strange uh, uh, inventions of, of ontic things. Yeah. What, is the, what is the reason behind theirs? What, what are they trying to gain by... I say this is a good question. What does one gain by that? Mm -hmm. Do they solve any problem? No. They pose a problem. The only problem they pose is, as my, <coughs> my daughter, the psychologist, has done, that they, the problem that they pose is how they explain that rational beings, or scientists, and some of them uh, well seasoned scientists, prestigious scientists, come to believe in all that nonsense. How is it possible that they are so good in their specialties and when it comes? To this, they fail utterly. Another very popular fantasy is. Do, will you have an answer or, or a, 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 a hypothesis about why this is the case? Why people who are great in their special areas are so pedestrian in. Well, it's, it's of course not a new, new phenomenon. Leibniz was a great mathematician. But his physics was rotten, and his ontology even more so, because he was the inventor of the monads that are uh, isolated from one another, disconnected, and so on. But he was a great tradition, he was a, uh, uh, a great mathematician, one of the greatest mathematicians in history, co inventor of the Newton, of the intelligent calculus, and so on. And in addition, he was, he was really a humanist who, in the midst of those horrible wars, he was trying to find peace and things like that. He was a good guy, mm. you know, unlike most philosophers. <laughs> uh, so, 